Designing Worlds is brought to you by Garden of Dreams, offering the finest in natural and fantasy environments. everyone and welcome to Designing Worlds, the weekly show about design and designers in virtual worlds, brought to you by Prim Perfect Publications. I'm Elric Merlin. And I'm Safia Widditions. And today we're returning to one of the most lovely estates in Second Life, the home of His Majesty Brick Masters. We visited here a little while ago, but since then His Majesty has totally overhauled his estate and has had a fantastic new mansion built for him by the renowned Second Life architect Patch Thibode, and the result is spectacular. As many of you know, once or twice a year at various charity events, we auction Designing World shows to raise money for the charity in question, and this year... His Majesty was one of the winners of the auction at Fantasy Fair, and this is his very special show. We're at the gates of his home now, but Safia, I believe there's more to see before we cross the water to the house itself. That's right, Elric, and I believe His Majesty is waiting for us. Follow me. Here's our host at Magisterium Riviera Estate, His Majesty Brick Masters. Welcome to the show, Your Majesty. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. Now, I believe that this is a new addition to the estate, added as part of the remodeling. Can you tell us why you decided to build this? Uh, yes, I, I do love my horses, my thoroughbred horses, and my car collection, and my main home being surrounded by water uh, made it very difficult to have those uh, kept at the main house. So here on the main part of the grove, I went ahead and had the extension added for garages and for stables to keep them so I can easily access them and then ride about the grove whenever I wish. And I believe there's something else here, too. Uh, you must be uh, referring to the office I have here set up for my personal secretary, D. Uh, the secretary has her own office to handle estate business for me when I'm away. It's here at the end of the garages at the front. One of the things that I find so striking here is the amazing textures of the buildings, and I believe that's reflected in the villa itself. Oh, definitely. Here you'll find a tremendous number of one-of-a-kind textures that are found nowhere else in Second Life. Uh, Patch, the architect, he took a lot of high-resolution photography while he was in Italy in real life uh, on a trip recently uh, and brought those back and created the textures for this build. And it was, it was just such an amazing thing to have him do, and I was very, very happy they did that. Now, I gather you've commissioned a video about the estate. Can you tell us a bit about it? Uh, yes. Um, uh, there's a wonderful videographer who goes by the name of Susie Anderton, and uh, she's done some other videos for The Grove. 
uh, and was recommended to me, and I wanted to have my estate uh, commemorated against uh, some of my most favorite uh, classical music pieces, um, and she did a beautiful job filming it, um, uh, and it just came out beautifully. I really did, I really am very happy with the video, with the way it came out. Well, let's take a look at a part of that now. Yes, definitely. I think we should now travel across to the main part of the estate. Last time, I believe, we sailed on a gondola. Quite right, we did. However, this time it's just been upgraded a bit to where the gondolas now will carry multiple people at once, up to six to eight passengers at once across the water, rather than just one or two at a time. So it's a little bit nicer, more social ride across the water. Oh, that sounds fun. Let's go. And now we have the chance to board, and this will glide effortlessly to the island of the Magisterium? Yes, indeed. It'll be a nice, smooth ride across the water. And while, as Elric says, we are gliding effortlessly, we're also going to take a short break. But we'll be back to see more of this beautiful estate, so... Don't go away! Radio Real is an internet public radio station with multiple streams on the air daily. We play an extensive variety of music for listeners with eclectic taste, from early music to Victoriana, big band and folk, plus drama and special programs. For more details, visit radioreal.org. The best things in life are free. Designing Worlds is brought to you by Dutchie. Live your dreams. She was enraptured with the light. Luminous panels of jewel-like iridescence everywhere. Violet, emerald, gold that beckoned and warmed. She pulled her hand back, stopping herself from a crystal that she had unconsciously reached for. 
It could not really be polite to start handling things the very moment you arrived, but why was she here? Welcome back to Designing Worlds, the show all about design and designers in virtual worlds. And today we're returning to one of the most lovely estates in Second Life, known as the Magisterium Riviera Estate, the home of His Majesty Brick Masters. And after a trip by boat and carriage, we've arrived at the upper courtyard with a beautiful fountain and an intriguing little building. Can you tell us about this, Your Majesty? Uh, yes, that is the Estate Private Chapel, which uh, is currently in use as a sculpture gallery, although for different uh, events, weddings and such, it has uh, easily been converted into a chapel with proper pews and altar, uh, but right now I do have it displaying artwork at this time. Now, I gather that uh, your house is essentially open to the public. They can come here and explore the grounds and the house itself. <laughs> Absolutely. It is open to the public at all times, and uh, we have uh, a number of beautiful pieces of artwork and things to be seen. That, And the textures alone are so beautiful, it's worth a quick trip, but it's available to anyone who wishes to come and tour the grounds. I think you should have some guided tours so people can learn the background to the artworks and more about the designers who've created all this fantastic work. Uh, it's funny you should mention that. We actually have been doing something now that's in the works to have a self-guided tour, more along the uh, lines of at certain key points where there's specific textures or artwork, uh, it would give the uh, person touring specific uh, information and background historical data on what they're seeing. So we do have that in the works. And perhaps the tour could finish with a trip to your amazing fun fair. I gather that's still up in the sky above your estate. Mm, yes, it is. It's uh, lively as ever. It has a lot of new rides and it gets quite a lot of visitors. So, shall we climb this beautiful stairway? And I have to say, I love the waterfall here. Oh, so glad you like it. Really, I'm very glad you like it. I, it's I'm just, uh, this home has gone beyond my expectation. It's going to be here for a very long time. Good. <laughs> Good. <laughs> yeah. Expense and time wise, it's going to be here for a very long time, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> This really is stunning. Thank you so much. I'm very proud of it and I'm glad you like it. Let's take a look to remind ourselves what your last house was like. Oh, that should be fun.
to say, I did love that house, but this one is utterly beautiful. I love the Italian style of it, the textures and the detailing. What made you go for this particular Italianate style of house? Well, it's often been a, a great favorite of mine as far as architectural style. Um, it's something that the original Grove way back when was based on Tuscan and early Italianate style. Mm -hmm. But I've always uh, loved it just from just my own aspirations of wanting something classic and beautiful. And I often thought of this style when I thought of classic and elegant in that context. How long did it take from conception to build? Well, honestly, from conception to build, and that involves convincing the uh, amazing Patch Thibault to come in world and build this. He's a real-life architect. Um, it took approximately, I want to say, about 18 months total uh, mm. to conceive of the whole project and then to get it to where you see it now. Wow. How much did you work with Patch to get exactly what you wanted? Well, the thing is, Patch is amazing through his insight and the way he interacts with you. He almost goes into your head, and every time I'd convey things I liked or whatever, he, he always knew exactly what I loved. And he it's almost like he read my mind, but a lot of this classic detail are... are um, he's known for this style. He's known for this type of architecture. And so I knew what to expect, but in the same way, when I would convey the kind of grandeur I wanted or the, the type of layout that I wanted, he already knew in his own mind. He, he crawled into my head and pulled it right out, and I couldn't have been more happy. Yeah. Well, let's go inside and take a look around. You know, it could take some time because I want to marvel over the detailing here, like the lanterns either side of the door. Do you see the lattice work? It's absolutely exquisite. Uh, thank you. Yes, again, all original work by Patch and the textures and all the pieces and everything. And a large part of what you'll see are one-of-a-kind textures, again, even the lattice work, the things that he brought in from the real world, from photography, and made them into some really nice textures. You won't see them anywhere else. Mm. Welcome to my new home. Very happy you guys are here. Please. Wow. <laughs> wow, this is so gorgeous. So, although Patch created the house, you've done the interior design and chose the pieces we can see, Brick. Uh, yes, I try to stay with classic design that will bring in some of the artistic elements uh, in, in, in alignment with the feel of the house, but still have it with current day and have more contemporary pieces as well. So I tried to give it a good max, uh, a, good, a good mix uh, of things, but still have it match my lifestyle today that I have. That's great. I love it when people do that with homes mm. and make it, it gives a real story to it. Mm -hmm. And here, everywhere you look, there's such magnificent detailing. You have the painted walls here, draw, drawing your eyes upwards. And then there's that really beautiful wooden ceiling with its painted details. So to me, this is suggesting an older house with the stucco and marble being added later. Perhaps a more Renaissance style maybe even a Baroque style, but retaining elements of the later Middle Ages. It makes one feel that this house has so many stories to tell. 
I'm elated that you said that because we really strove to try to make it have that feel about it uh, of something very old and unique uh, that's been given birth after rebirth with uh, facelifts, if you will, over time with a lot of history. But yeah, there there are nooks and crannies of this home. If visitors come and have some fun and do some investigation of their own, they'll find some really interesting uh, things that would be a surprise that do tell a story. And I think it's important to have something like that to give more interest anyway to the home. Okay, let's take another look at the beautiful film you've had made of the estate brick, created by Susie Anderton. Ah, wonderful. This is so lovely, a grotto beneath the house. Thank you. It's one of the uh, fun surprises that are to be had when coming and touring the estate. There's a number of places just like this, but this is probably the most special. I imagine you can spend many a happy afternoon here. I can, and we often have, um, sipping on wine and just chatting the afternoon away and going over things with Dee sometimes. She'll come and visit me here for a quick meeting, um, or the owner of the Grove will come by, and we'll sit and discuss some of the residents and some of their needs. But uh, I do love spending time here. It's a very peaceful, serene place to come. And there's a lot more of the house to see. 
and some gorgeous details. And to help you see some of them, we're going to place you in the capable hands of our amazingly talented photographer, Wildstar Beaumont. Well, we enjoy a glass of wine and some delightful conversation.
And now we've come to the upper story of one of the most lovely estates in Second Life, known as the Magisterium Riviera Estate, the home of His Majesty Brick Masters. On this level, I believe, Your Majesty, uh, entry to some of the rooms is restricted. Uh, yes, that's true. While the majority of everything is open to the public, the grounds and the home, I do reserve a little bit of privacy for my daughter's room, the princess, uh, Princess Nesca, and then my bedroom down the, at the end of the hall. And that's those are our bedrooms. They're our private space. We try to uh, respectfully ask visitors if they don't mind to not go into our bedrooms. Otherwise, everything is open to the public. But there is one very special room here open to the public. Ah, uh, yes, indeed there is. It's probably my most favorite room of all. Uh, it's the peacock-themed morning room. It's a place where I take breakfast or I have informal visitors up here and the staff will bring refreshments. But it's a lovely, casual setting and a wonderful place to gather with friends and family. And it's I just love peacocks and I love the colors. Let's take a look. Yes, by all means, let's. This is lovely. I'm a huge fan of peacocks too. And I think I recognise the design of the panelling. Is this by Kaya Angel of the Angel Manor Estate? Ah, indeed it is. You have a very good eye. That is panelling from one of the Kaya builds that I stripped away all of the textures on it and applied my own new custom textures to make it more fitting for this kind of room, more casual and more of a peacock theme. You've created something very special here, a work of art that's also a home. There's a warm, friendly feeling to it. Ah, thank you so much, and I want that feeling to extend to everyone, so I want people to feel welcome here always, to come visit and to wander and to enjoy the estate. Now, Brick, in the last incarnation of your home, you had a special area in the garden for dances and concerts. Does that still happen? Well, not like it used to be. Now we have a beautiful uh, formal ballroom attached onto the home on one wing of the house. It's a lovely ballroom uh, with a formal entry. We do have our, our sculptured uh, formal gardens in the back with reflecting pool. Where we'll often have events there as well. But for the most part, for music events, we do have our, our ballroom now set up for those events. Well, I'd certainly like to look at that. And here we are in another magnificent room. And, Safia, well, I see you've changed. Of course. I can't come to a ballroom like this and not expect to dance. Well, you do look lovely. It's a beautiful gown. So, Brick, do you have more plans for the estate? Actually, uh, yes, aside from being open at all times for people to come and view and enjoy, uh, on a very limited basis, it's being offered as a very exclusive um, uh, wedding venue for very, very discriminating people who want to have uh, highest quality and uh, have a very exclusive special wedding they can have that here uh, with enough advance notice and uh, that's being offered now but it's on a very very limited first come first serve basis it's not a constant thing let's take one last look at the beautiful film of the estate created by Susie Anderton of In World Films
And now, as we're all ready, perhaps we could celebrate with a dance. Ah, yes, by all means, let's do that. Well, this has been a fascinating show. It really has. And I'd like to thank our guest and our gracious host today, His Majesty Brickmasters. Thanks. Thanks to both of you very much. I had a wonderful time visiting, and I'm so happy you were able to visit my home today. Well, sadly, we've come to the end of our time here now. But don't forget that if you want to see this program again, you'll be able to catch it on the Designing Worlds channels at slartist.com, on our Designing Worlds channel on Vimeo, and on the Designing Worlds and Prim Perfect blogs. Next week, we're paying a visit to the Second Life cheerleading squad to see their routines, their fabulous new stadium, and to learn about their amazing fundraising work too. And that's definitely something to look forward to. But for now, we must leave you and wish you fair winds and clear waters. Fair winds and clear waters.